won't believe it. You just completed the story. <laughs> oh. Hello everybody, before this video gets going, I just want to take a couple seconds real quick to tell you guys a few things. I'm going to make it brief. If this video can get 500 comments in the first 48 hours, I'm going to donate $200 to CRWM. So by Tuesday morning, March 5th at 9 a.m., if I can get 500 comments, I'm going to donate $200 to Coloradans for Responsible Wildlife Management. It's an organization that's currently fighting a ballot initiative by anti-hunters to ban mountain lion hunting, bobcat hunting, and lynx hunting in Colorado. It's known as Initiative 91. Originally, when I, when I started my channel, my goal was to create a little extra revenue to fund my own, my own hunting adventures. And over the last couple of years, my, my goals or my why, if you will, is starting to shift as I see more wildlife decisions become political. And so what I want to do is start using this channel to develop a community and to give back to some of these organizations that are truly trying to protect our wildlife and protect our rights to hunt. The general public needs to realize that by banning the, the hunter's rights to manage certain species, it's really a detriment to other species is what ends up happening. The number of wildlife decisions that are starting to show up through fabricated or misguided ballot initiatives or by hasty special interest legislation is truly starting to become concerning to me. Uh, what, what should be happening is that appropriate wildlife commissions should be using science-based biology to make these decisions. Um, a different Colorado ballot initiative to reintroduce wolves back in 2020 was passed and if this initiative passes, it would essentially allow a second apex predator on the landscape with no management tools in place. Um, this would undoubtedly have a big impact on outfitter livelihoods, uh, rural livestock, and ungulate populations, and hunter tag allocations, resident and non-resident tag allocations in Colorado. Um, so what I want to do is if you guys can can help me grow this channel, I'm going to do my best to start giving back a little bit more here. Um, like I said, 500 comments in the first 48 hours is going to amount to $200 to Coloradans for responsible wildlife management. I'm also going to donate all the YouTube revenue that this channel makes within the first 30 days, so by April 3rd, to the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation. And uh, to top it off, if you guys can help grow the channel to 5,000 subscribers by April 3rd, so within the next 30 days, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give away a Peaks Equipment um, Backcountry Z trekking pole, their sissy sticks, and a Backcountry Dual headlamp to one person that leaves a comment and who is also a subscriber of this channel. And finally, I just wanted to say that I hope you guys enjoy the longer format films. Uh, I feel like it's important to share the, the full hunting experience, as, as much of it as I can. And honestly, when I'm watching the films, I like to relive the full adventure with, with my family and my friends. And I think it's important for anti-hunters or people that don't hunt in general that happen to watch the video. I think it's important for them to see the full, full experience. So I just want to thank you guys for your support, and I hope you enjoy this film. some new elk. We dropped Brian's bull off at the meat locker yesterday and uh, cruised over here today. Dad's got a rifle tag. Season opens in two days. Um, set up camp just a little bit ago so he's actually looking at four or five cows over on the other hillside right now. We got two days to try to, to scout anyway to try to pick up a a nice bowl or two that we'd like to go after before opener. We've been applying for like six, seven years and he finally drew the tag. So we've bow hunted in here. 
he killed his archery bull in here last year so we're pretty familiar with the area we should be able to turn up a couple decent bulls um, never rifle hunted though so I'm not exactly sure what to expect when that season opens but we got camp set up a little bit ago there's still firewood cut from last year where we stacked it and uh, there's some snow on the back side of these north facing slopes so we'll be able to melt a little bit of that down for water if we need to because it's a bit of a trek here too to, to get to any water so I'm gonna help him glass and we'll see if we can turn up something tonight anyway tomorrow's scouting day too and then the opener it should be a, a fun hunt I think he's a big five. Looks a little more impressive from the back. We're calling it quits for tonight. The wind was whipping out on the point, so we'll get back out there early tomorrow. We spotted a few elk anyway. Good start for night one. What'd you think of the first night glass one? Well, we've seen elk. What have you seen? About nine cows or so, maybe two bulls. But they were a long, long ways away. They Bulls were nice even, though. They weren't even in our zip code. We were a long ways out. But it was cold out there at that point. But see if we can't pick something up in the morning. A little closer would be nice. But we we'll see milk. Does that mean you're, they're too far to go after? No, not necessarily. I've been over there before, but I, <laughs> I know what it takes. <laughs> oh, should we have some dinner? Yeah. My belly's growling for some supper. So. Did you see anything back there? I see one elk on that far hillside. I'm gonna get the spotter out. Over there. Where we saw that five point. He's wide. His horns seem to lay out so wide.
Oh, he is pretty nice. Yeah, I think so. Impressive from the back. Now today's Saturday. Sunday says a hundred percent chance of rain, but from today till tomorrow, it's going to drop ten degrees too for day day highs. Sunday and Monday. 40s, possibly even some snow on Tuesday, high of 39 and low of 30, so it's going to get colder in the next few days. We made a decision. We're going to back up again, <laughs> and we're going to go up there, only because we spotted a couple bulls up there. made the decision to kind of leave that five point alone the trait by camp here and we're gonna hike in another couple miles to where we saw these bigger bulls um, one of them looked like a for sure six point the other one was hard to tell but they both look nicer than this five point right by camp here uh, this is a draw tag so we're trying to be a little bit more picky these types of tags don't come around that often so um, we're gonna try to hold off for something a little bigger but we'd also like to have some elk meat so we'll see at what point in the trip it gets to be where maybe we lower the standards a little bit we're coming off of a pretty strenuous pack out in Wyoming too so it was kind of a little bit tougher decision to leave this five point right at camp because he's not a bad bull but we'll see you know there's been a I'm assuming a fair amount of bow hunting pressure in here already, so we're gonna head in a little deeper. Uh, kind of some nastier country. And uh, see if we can't pick up some of these bigger bulls that we were glassing uh, yesterday afternoon and this morning. So I'm gonna get going. Probably gonna be a full day hiking and maybe we'll get some glassing in tonight. We'll see. Hoping to be set up tomorrow morning for opener. We just got into the bottom. We're gonna fill up our waters and then it'll be a couple more hours. I'm not sure how many feet it is to the top, but we'll get up there, set up camp, and we should have time to, to glass tonight. So we didn't, we didn't bring all of our stuff. So we just got a couple of nalgenes. We're gonna fill up here and head up higher. I thought they were 
thing out there. Grizzly bear or black bear? I don't know, they're both like twins. I was trying to scare them from coming. But Once I realized they were, they were black bear, I wasn't as worried. <laughs> Right now, he still wants to come this way. I think I'm gonna get out of here before I get myself in trouble. That's close enough for me. I don't know if, I don't think there's a mama, but no reason to risk it. <laughs> Should we get back to hunting? <sighs> Got our heart pumping a little bit. It's just as that happened, something up above us knocked a rock down and that one bear climbed the tree. Uh, I don't know, between us and the rock, something scared it, or we scared it enough to make it climb the tree, so. <clears throat> I'm gonna get back to hiking. And the bears are back. Hey there. Hey. I don't feel like messing with him. What the hell? <laughs> Just a little bear, but I'm not looking to mess with him. <laughs> He's coming back again. I guess he's a lot smaller than I thought he was, but <laughs> he just been, he kept coming towards us. More excitement for the trip. Let's get up to the top. <laughs> We're up here, probably about as high as an elk would ever be. <clears throat> This is where we saw those two bulls. So we're giving it a try tonight. We just saw two spikes cut through the hillside, but it's kind of tough glassing up here, so we'll just have to see. And as you can probably hear, it's pretty windy. So we'll see what we can turn up, but it's not the best glassing. Tomorrow's the big day, the opener. But the forecast is for rain in the morning starting out, so that's the forecast. Um, yeah, tomorrow's the opener. That's what we've been waiting for, so 
Fingers crossed and hope for the best. Well, we, we found a couple cows this morning. I don't know if the bull had already moved into the woods, if there was a bull with them by the time the fog lifted. And then we saw those two little spikes that are, I assume, the same ones from last night. So we're going to cruise up the ridge, look off the backside, which is where we saw one of those bigger bulls. And then we'll glass some more stuff on the back side here. Well, we were just laying here in camp and heard two gunshots across the hillside over here where that five point was. So I'm assuming he just got shot. I got out of the tent just in time to see those three cows cresting the hill headed out of that drainage. So he's likely dead. And then that was kind of our backup plan. So now we're looking at uh, Sticking it out over here for sure, most likely, because that was those have been the only elk that we've seen kind of over that way. Um, I don't know. There's a couple nice bulls over here that we know about. We just got to find them. We've kind of lost our vantage point since we moved over here. We were in this for a bigger bull anyway, so we'll probably get out and start glassing here in a little bit. It's 11. It's almost noon now. I think he shot that bull about 11.30. Let's see if Dad, when he gets back in here, if he's saw anything on the other hillside as far as people or anything. But regardless, those elk blew out of that drainage, so... That's no longer an option. I didn't see anything. I have a pretty good view over there. He's probably in the woods quartering it. Well, we're back out glassing tonight. And other than a little bit of wind, it's pretty quiet. Nothing's talking. I can see a lot of country from right here. Not as good as before, but still a lot of country. And uh, nothing so far. I think it's not like it's getting later in the year. And it's not like these wolves are out chasing and looking for cows anymore. I think they've pretty much got their little harem of cows and they're holed up in there in their favorite spots, so uh, we'll see what happens tonight here. We gotta start finding elk again. I don't know what happened to these two bigger ones that were in this area. All we saw this afternoon so far is those two spikes. But weather looks like it's gonna get colder and snowier the next couple of days so it's not going to get any easier and we didn't bring a ton of food over to this spot so i don't know it's looking kind of bleak but i know there's elk around we 
just got to get lucky here. Figure out where they're hold up. We'll figure something out here. We'll see how the rest of the night plays out, though. I thought maybe they did me up and moving a little earlier with that weather that blew through, so... just got shot and not by us we were making our way down the hill and we were just kind of getting in range of him and a shot went off it was so strange that bull came all the way down off the hillside he had to bugle 40 50 times and there's a horse trail right at the bottom here. <laughs> and I'm guessing somebody was just standing at the horse trail and shot him as he came down, I don't know. Regardless, it wasn't us. We're starting to run out of bulls around here. I'm gonna get back up to camp and reassess. Well, we needed water today. So we dropped down into the drainage in front of us, filled up with water. And now we're gonna switch it up tonight. We're gonna go one ridge line over in class. Hopefully we'll be able to see the ridge line we've been watching plus the next one over where we classed up on a really nice bull on our scouting day. So we're just spending, it's probably like one o'clock now, so it won't be too bad. We'll get up there in an hour or so, and then we'll have the evening to class. See if we can't change it up a little bit, see something different. The 
Is that him? Yeah. That damn spot. That's him. Yeah. That's him. Well, we got eyes on a really good bull for all of about 30 seconds as he came up that ridge with a couple cows. But as fast as they appeared, they disappeared right down in the timber in front of us. And it really only left us with one option, which was try to call him out. And it just didn't end up panning out for us. Well, we're back at camp. <clears throat> that first bull got shot out from under us this morning. We cruised over to the other ridge line and a bull bugled and we just got a real quick glimpse of him and he was a a pretty big bull. He was he was the type of bull that we came here for. But uh he bugled probably six, eight times, but it was just by the time we got a range on him and set up a little bit, he was in and out of that clearing and it was just thick timber over there and after that he shut up and never bugled again after that, so we hiked it back, we're in camp, having our last supper <clears throat> before we run out of food. We'll have a little bit of snacks for tomorrow, but uh, we came this close twice today. And that second bowl was, he was a good one. So, I don't know. <clears throat> Maybe we'll get back on him tomorrow. We'll see. We're gonna eat some food and go to bed. Lots of highs and lows today. Day five started out foggy again. We also got rain, snow, wind, and more fog later on in the afternoon. We only heard a few bugles throughout the day and never did lay eyes on an elk. Well, it's about 11.45 right now. We pulled down camp and uh, we're moving one hillside over. This is kind of the last hurrah. Probably tonight and tomorrow morning might be our last evening and morning to hunt. I got to get back to work. It's been a two week grind between my brother's hunt and this one. Running out of days and running out of food. So we'll see, but the days are getting numbered now. The hours. So. See if we can make something happen. We're back up where that bull was bedded two days ago. And it's where he bugled from yesterday about the same time. So we're on our perch. We're gonna sit here till probably 3.45, 4 o'clock. We've only got a couple shooting lanes. We're just hoping he does something similar to the other day. Hopefully he bugles. Now we can get a point on him and figure out what we want to do. So it's a waiting game for now. We'll see. See if he shows up. Showing up is one thing. Getting his shots is a whole nother thing. As much timber as there is down there. There's a bullet about 700 yards across the hill from us right now. They bugled all of my 
bull ended up working the ridge just out of range this morning on us so we decided we're gonna stick it out one more evening and one more morning see if we can't get it done kind of a last-ditch effort here we'll probably sit around here all day Maybe have a shot with like five minutes of light left if he does something similar to last night or Possibly in the morning. Hopefully one or the other. We, we walked this ridge down a little further and found a, a few um, Better shooting vantages that are just a little bit closer even so This is the first time we've been over on this ridge So we're trying to figure that out too So this is it. It's either gonna happen in the next 24 hours or it's not. How's your food rationing? This is what I got to get me through the day for the next 24 to 36 hours. Justin's peanut butter, a little couple bites of trail mix, a couple bites of beef jerky, and a fruit rope. What do you got? Well, it's out in my pack. Oh. Actually, I think I got a little bit of beef jerky in a baggie. And I got a small Kit Kat, two bites. And I got some shot blocks. And I think that's it. Last chance. I'm gonna try it tonight and tomorrow morning. And after that, we're packing out. We just got onto some elk again, so now it's hate to leave, but we kind of forced to with time and food. We got water. Well, I'm heading down the ridge to our post for this evening. Dad's already down there. It's about 4.15 now. Probably have a good three hours of waiting before he shows up if he does something similar to last night. So, fingers crossed. This is it, tonight in the morning. Hopefully he, that bull just continues doing what he's been doing, comes out on that hillside. Very little bugling except for at night. Hard to do anything during the day when they're like that, so this is it. Probably a five minute window tonight, five minute window in the morning.
They're out on the hillside. Get on your gun. Dead. They're on the right hand side. I think he's the last one. He's the last one. On the far right. He's the, you can tell he's the biggest one. And he's coming. Oh, well, there's three. There's four of them. Distance, what? I'm not sure of the distance. You're not sure of the distance? No. It's 12 to near the hill. He's going down. He's right in the middle. He's, he's just below the stick. Is he way in the back? He's in the back. He's in the back. In the back of the woods. Where's your rangefinder? Right there. Do a double check. You better be ready because those cows are. Six twenty-two. The cows are at six twenty-two. Six twenty-two. Six six twenty-two. Six twenty-five. I think I'm okay. Oh, okay. Yep. I can't find any out. They're low. I don't find any out. You don't know. The bull's to the right. Shoot when you can. I tipped him over. <laughs> Holy shit. You hit him in the neck, so get ready. He's down. I think he's dead. Oh. <laughs> oh my goodness. I don't believe it. That's a long shot. Doubled my distance tonight. Didn't think it was going to happen. Day five of five. We we're leaving tomorrow morning. Maybe hunt a couple hours in the morning. I talked Adam into staying to another day. He's a nice one though. And he pulls a nice one. He's dead. He is dead. The 
just completed the story. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh. It looks fairly wide. Just hit stop recording, Dad. Hit that red button. Add it later. Those cows are still on the house side over there. I don't know what's going on. Good shot. What is that? 625 yards, right? Yep. That's what we planned. You see that little spot over there in the hill? That's my big bull. No, it's going to be probably two hours before we get to put our hands on him. Look at that sunset. If that is the same bull this morning, he circled all the way around the mountain and came. We lost him up on top this morning and he's coming up from down, down low. I still can't believe it. I can't believe it when I seen him tip over. Well, might be a lot of flashlight work tonight, huh? I forgot to give you a high five. <laughs> I cannot believe it. What good optics and good range finders can do. We're just about down to starving with food, so maybe it's back straps tonight. What are you talking about? I still got all kinds of food. This is what Adam has left to eat. We'll, we'll just take two days worth of food and go in. Well, we're on day five now. So that bowl was at, it's going to get dark on us. So that bowl was at 625 yards when you shot him, approximately. <laughs> so that puts it right there. If you use the Onyx rangefinder tool, and that's the clearing that he's in. He rolled down a little bit, so I'm going to drop a waypoint. <laughs> I'm going to drop a waypoint right there. That's approximately where he is. Now we'll know exactly where he is when we're over there in the dark. So we just filled up with water and I got my phone out here going to Onyx. Hit this button, hit it again, brings up you can bring up compass mode and then just pan to the direction that you that we dropped the waypoint so there's the dead elk so that tells us basically due north we got ahead and then turn on the rangefinder tool tells you approximately 400 yards up the hill and maybe Three, four hundred feet in elevation, it looks like. So that's the way we gotta go. Oh my god. Exactly what I was hoping for. Nice, big, mature bowl. Turn around so we can see him. Well, the way he's lodged here, Adam, I'm afraid to move his head. I think he's going to roll. Right now his antlers are buried in the gravel. See, they're dug in. He's got some really nice fronts. Oh. 
Well, this is what I was hoping for. So I feel, feel blessed to have gotten them today. Well, I just discovered the uh, bullet on the off shoulder. That should be it right there. It just feels like a big hunk of lead. Look at that. That was a 210 grain nozzler. I'll be souvenir. We worked through a good portion of the night quartering up that bowl and finally finished up about 3 a.m. on Friday morning. That night marked the 16th night in a row that we slept either on the ground or in a truck between the two elk hunts. The next morning I shoved the camera in my pack and we focused all of our efforts on getting the meat off the mountain. The only footage I have packing elk was this short clip on my iPhone. I had to be back to work on Monday morning which meant that we had a short window of time to get the meat back to the truck. We worked non-stop packing meat and gear until about 9 p.m. on Saturday night, just in time to make the 24 hour drive home. It was a long hunt and a stressful pack out, but memories were made because of one more day.